spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. Uh, yes. A key recording there. But before that audio of Michael Cohen and then candidate Trump surfaced, the name Alan Weisselberg was not widely known. But for federal prosecutors, it appears the longtime Trump Organization CFO has been on their radar for quite some time. Last week, Weisselberg was granted immunity in connection with the investigation that led Michael Cohen to plead guilty to campaign finance laws. He was also called to testify before a federal grand jury. In a Politico magazine article, senior writer Michael Cruz breaks down President Trump's four-decade relationship with Weisselberg and why he could be an important asset for the Mueller investigation. Michael joins us now from Arlington to talk about all of this. And there's a reason, Michael, Weisselberg is known as Trump's money man. But specifically, tell us what information he can provide to the special counsel, not only about payments perhaps through Michael Cohen to women alleging adultery, but other business transactions as well. Well, it's hard to say with specifics, but Alan Weisselberg is on a very short list of people, maybe at the top of the list of people who know the most about the finances of Donald Trump going back 40 years almost. The longtime chief financial officer of the Trump Organization has worked for Trump for so long that he, in fact, started working for Trump's father. So if there is literally one person that the president probably does not want investigators talking to about dollars and cents going in to the Trump Organization and coming out of the Trump Organization, it is Alan Weisselberg. And Trump, the president himself, had said that an investigation by the special counsel of his personal finances, uh, Weisselberg also prepared his tax returns, would be crossing a red line. The special counsel, though, has been very careful up until now as to having a very narrow and focused um, direction when investigating uh, any potential offshoots from the Russia probe. What is the president afraid of? Well, so Weisselberg with this deal is talking specifically about the Michael Cohen case to investigators in the Southern District of New York. So there are a number of different investigations going on, but whatever Alan Weisselberg is telling them or has told those investigators about what Michael Cohen did or didn't do is clearly of concern to the president because of the obvious uh, Trump implicating uh, potential campaign finance violations. So put this aside even from the uh, uh, investigation that Bob Mueller is, is uh, coordinating right now, but generally speaking, this is not uh, a good thing for Donald Trump, or potentially is not a good thing for Donald Trump, I should probably say. Right. And, you know, some of the allegations and uh, suspicions about the Trump family business is that it mirrored in many ways uh, the mob in Manhattan and how real estate was a great way to hide money or perhaps get investments from overseas and not have to identify who's funding your, your buildings and your construction. In your article, you reference a 2004 book written by Donald Trump in which he writes, quote, Weisselberg did whatever was necessary to protect the bottom line and refuse to succumb to the pressures of risk. What is it about this excerpt that strikes you as being key right now? Well, I think what stood out to me was that mention of risk. Obviously, there is considerable risk right now for not only the president, but uh, those who have been closest to him for the longest, and Alan Weisselberg certainly is one of those people. And so he is weighing, the way that many people are weighing right now, the legal terrain and engaging the risk that uh, they are subject to. And so they have decisions to make. And obviously, uh, Weisselberg's decision here in this case was to uh, cooperate with investigators as somebody uh, who knows both men uh, told me for this piece, you know, Alan Weisselberg is not going to go to jail for Donald Trump. Whether or not he did something illegal, who knows, we'll find out. But even if he didn't do something illegal, he's certainly not now going to do something that would put him 
uh, Alan Weisselberg into further legal jeopardy. But there have been some examples of Weissel. Okay, look, the bottom line here is that, is this the guy who was cooking the books for Trump? That's the question people have on their minds. And there's a curious incident involving Alan Weisselberg and the president's wealth uh, that I want you to talk about. It was when the New York Times, they tried to nail down a number back in 2005. Um, and in their exchange with Weisselberg, some odd things were said. Can you just refresh our memories as to what happened? Sure. So this is uh, an anecdote uh, that comes from Tim O'Brien, who at the time was a reporter for The New York Times and uh, was working on a Trump biography, Trump Nation, which came out in 2005. He sat down with Alan Weisselberg, which was unusual to begin with because Alan Weisselberg is, has always been quite quiet and uh, under the radar. And so Tim sits down with Alan Weisselberg and relays the fact that his reporting had demonstrated, it was telling him that uh, Donald Trump was not worth anywhere close, actually, to what he consistently said he was worth, sat down with Alan Weisselberg. Alan Weisselberg put in front of him a, uh, a, a balance that added up, he said, to $6 billion. Tim did the math. It was $5 billion, and Tim pointed out the discrepancy, at which point Alan <laughs> went back to his office or got up and said, I'm going to go back to my office and find that other billion, and then never came back. This sort of speaks to a larger point that forever, I mean, this has been true forever from the 80s onward, there's always been a question about how much Donald Trump is worth, whether he's truly worth the 10 billion he said he was when he started running for president or something much, much lower than that. And he has gone to great lengths. I mean, there are many examples of this, but he has gone to great lengths for decades to obscure that actual number, to put forth the sense that he is richer than he actually is. And so I don't know that this is his biggest concern at this point, but one thing that we could learn at the end of all of these various investigations is actually a more definitive number as to what he might be worth. It is fascinating, and there's surely more interesting stuff to be learned. Um, you know, one of the questions Weisselberg may have to answer is, did you ever find that extra billion dollars? Uh, Michael Cruz, yeah, great, to, go. <laughs> great to speak with you today. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me.